Hi everyone, my name is Lachlan and today we're going to cook a traditional gravy. So this is a fantastic recipe that is good to have in your repertoire for any roast dinner, whether it be a roast during the year, a roast at Christmas time or anything like that. Today we are doing a chicken sort of flavoured gravy, uh, which would be great with a roast turkey or a roast chicken or anything along those lines. Obviously though, if you're roasting lamb or beef or pork, you can obviously swap out the bones and follow a very similar recipe to get the same result. In front of me here, I have all of the ingredients necessary. And this is a great recipe that if you can make this in advance, you can either freeze this down, keep it in the fridge. So you might want to make this a day or two prior to serving. And then when you're making that roast and you've got lots of things going on, you can simply reheat the gravy and you know it'll be perfect. You can always add your pan juices on the day as well to get that extra bit of flavor. So first things first, I've got some chicken wings, about a kilo or so and some milk powder. Now the milk powder is optional. Basically I'm going to sprinkle the milk powder over the chicken wings. And this actually speeds up these chicken wings um, when we need to brown them in the oven. So if you have lactose intolerant people in your family, obviously you can take this out, but it really it's just making it quicker and we'll get a, a richer color with our gravy. So I'll just add this in. You don't need to have it perfectly but get the chicken wings covered with the milk powder. So these are nicely covered now, which is great. I'm going to add these to a, a roasting dish. So here I've got an induction compatible casserole dish. Um, this is great because it's going to go into the oven to roast these bones, but then I'll take it out and we'll pop it back onto the cooktop later on when we add the stock and everything else. So the wings are done. I've then got two sticks of celery, which I'm just going to roughly chop. Don't really worry about the size of any of this. Also, I have two carrots. So I'll chop these up into rough portions as well. Scatter those through. Didn't peel these or anything like that. They're just straight on in. And then with our onions, I'm going to cut these into quarters. I'll take off the outer layer of skin, pop in the quarter, and now I'm going to pop these into the oven. So behind me I have an oven preheated to 200 degrees. These will roast for about 45 minutes to an hour. And really, we just want to get a really nice rich dark brown. So the color that these bones become will basically become the color of the sauce, which is really important. So don't rush this. If you've doubled this recipe, you will probably need to cook them even longer. Um, but I'll give you a few updates along the way. I'll, I'll show you where they're at. Give them a stir every 20 or 30 minutes or so. And once that's done, we can then pull them out of the oven, add the rest of the ingredients, and then it's all about patience, reduction, and generating all of that lovely flavor. Okay, so that's the last of the onion now. I'll just make sure this evenly distributed as best as possible. Excellent, so I've got a pretty rustic looking dish here of all my bones, carrots, celery, onion. Into the oven it goes. Forty-five to sixty minutes, and then we can kick on and finish off this gravy. So we're about forty minutes in now, and you can see we're starting to get some really fantastic colour on all of this. So now I'm just going to get in there with some tongs, just lift up the bits that have stuck. Be pretty rough with it if you need to. You can see we're getting some great colour, so this is good. Okay, I'll pop that back in. We'll give this another twenty minutes and then we can transfer it to the cooktop. Okay, so we've been an hour now. These are looking fantastic. So we've got little gnarly bits of, you know, blackening, some great color, some fantastic caramelization on the base of this dish as well. So I'm just going to turn the oven off. I'll transfer this to the cooktop and we'll deglaze it with some white wine and get the stock into it. Okay, so I'm going to pop this onto the induction now on induction setting seven. So that's a medium to high heat. So we'll get this on. That's set to go now. So in front of me here, I have the rest of the ingredients. Here I've got some flour and some butter. That's for the next stage of the recipe, so that can go to the side. I've got some garlic, some peppercorns, some thyme sprigs, and some parsley stalks. So these will all go in very shortly. Before that, I've got my white wines. I've got about 250 mils roughly. This will go straight in. 
You can hear that starting to sizzle. Now this is needs to deglaze and lift off all those stuck bits from the bottom of the pan. So, just be careful because this dish is super, super hot, but basically just scrape up everything in the base of that pan because you have so much flavor that is on the bottom of this. And you'll instantly start to smell it. And you pretty much want to reduce this wine almost all the way. And don't worry if everything starts to mush up and break, you know, that's just giving you more flavor. So this is looking perfect. You can see we still have a little bit of moisture in the bottom of this pan. So that's a little bit of the wine. Um, so that's plenty. We don't need to reduce that any further. Now I'm going to add one and a half liters of chicken stock. So that goes in. I'm also going to add my peppercorns. So about a teaspoon's worth. Two garlic cloves. They can just go in. My thyme and my parsley stalks. So I'll give this a really good mix just to make sure everything's fully submerged. I'm now just going to bring this up to induction setting nine just quickly, just to bring this up to a boiling point. Then I'll reduce it to a simmer and we need to reduce this by half. So what we need to do is get about 750 ml of liquid, which we will then strain off. We can then make a roux and that will thicken the gravy. And we'll have a beautifully rich, deep in color, delicious gravy to go with any roast meat. So this sauce now has had around about 15 minutes or so. Uh, I've kept it on induction seven the whole time and it's really nicely reduced now and I'll grab some of this liquid, it's beautiful color. So we've literally now got like a liquid roast chicken, um, which is going to be super, super tasty. So I'll switch that off now. I'll pour it through a sieve and now we can get the roux starting to thicken this gravy. So in front of me here, I have two pots, one here and one here. This one here has a sieve in place. So we'll pour this uh, stock and all the bones into the sieve to strain it off. This one here we will use to make our roux so then we can thicken the gravy. So just be careful when you are straining off all of this liquid as the, obviously the vessel is extremely hot and you need to make sure you have a really tight, confident grip before you do that. So pick it up and slowly start to pour this off. Initially you'll start out with all the liquid but then you'll get a massive amount of weight at the bottom of the pan because all the bones will want to fall out. So just be careful. Give it a bit of a shake. It'll start to fall in now, that's good. Right, there's pretty much no more liquid in this anymore. So I'll pop that to the side. Give that a great, good shake. And now we have around about 750 ml of liquid, which I will keep to the side also. So to make the roux, I've got my butter and my flour and my clean pot. A rubber spatula is important. So pop the butter into the pot. I'm just going to add this onto the cooktop now on induction setting six thereabouts. Once this is fully melted, then we'll add the flour and we'll cook it out until it goes a really nutty dark brown. Um, I'll bring the camera in so you can see exactly the color that we need. So once the butter's melted like so, just add in all of the flour. So here we have equal quantities of flour and butter, um, which is the most important thing. Give that a really, really good stir until it's all evenly distributed. And we want to cook this out until it goes a nice dark brown. So literally the color that this roux goes will be the color of the sauce. So you don't want to do this too quickly. If you're making a white sauce or a bechamel, you wouldn't go too far, but something dark like this, we want to actually make this nice and dark. So this will take a few minutes and make sure to stir as you go because we also don't want to burn this. So you can see here the texture of the roux has changed quite a bit. It's starting to almost split and break up and it's quite biscuity in its smell. So this is good, it's on its path. Now a lot of the water has evaporated from the butter. So this can burn quite quickly and it will start to get more of a nutty smell as we progress. And this will color quite quickly now. Okay, so you can see here we've got a really nice golden brown becoming sort of darker. So this is good, we don't want to burn this now, it's going to turn quite quickly. Okay, so this is exactly what we're after now. I'm actually going to increase the heat to induction setting eight. I'm changing to a whisk and I'm going to whisk in our strained stock. So do about half, it's quite
quite aggressive as you can hear and whisk that until it's completely smooth. This will give it great viscosity. I'll now add the rest of the stock. Perfect. And now we need to bring this to the boil to make sure this thickens. Okay, so this is up to the boil now. The flour has fully thickened to the amount that it needs to. So this is still quite a wet gravy. Um, I don't like a gravy that's really, really thick. Um, I like it to sort of fall around. But if you do like it thicker, instead of going 35 grams flour and 35 grams butter in the roux, you might want to increase that to 40 grams um, each and you'll get a thicker result. So play around with it. This is a texture that I really love, but it's up to you. So now we can transfer this to any serving dish that you like. You can freeze it, pop it into the fridge, whatever you like. This will keep for up to four or five days. So there's no need for you to cook this on the day that you plan to eat it. You can simply reheat it on the day. So here we go. We've got some beautiful, rich in color, deep in flavor, an amazing gravy. Fill up some gravy boats or some jugs, pop this down the table. Be careful not to spill any because you just want to retain as much of this and the flavor as you can. So there we go. So a few of these down the table. Serve these alongside any roast meat that you like, assuming that they work together. And there we go, an amazing traditional gravy recipe that I know you can use for a lot of your different roasting at home. So thank you so much for watching. We would really love it if you try this recipe at home. If you do, please take a photo, post on Facebook or Instagram and tag us along because we would love to follow you in your cooking journey.